Hey, brothers and sisters. Uh, well, this is going to be a short one. I just wanted to, I don't know, I guess commiserate with everybody. I think we're going to go pretty soon here. And, um, you know, it's, it just couldn't come soon enough for me. Uh, sure, everybody's got struggles in their life. And, uh, you know, it just make the rapture that much more sweet. And of course, we look forward to to seeing Jesus and, uh, you know, being with him in heaven. But, uh, here in the flesh, sometimes I just, I just wish I could, uh, have it done, have it over. So I guess, uh, many of you, you know, probably see the same YouTube channels and look at, you know, from a Christian end times perspective, there's probably a couple of dozen, fairly popular ones and I suppose you guys all you know see most of the same but I was watching one today and I don't even want to mention the channel or the video because I don't want anything I'm going to say to be connected with that because it wasn't about the video or what was going on it was about what was happening outside of the video that that got me going tonight and um, so you know somebody had a, a video there where you know, something was triggered in some lyrics of a song, and they thought that that was a kind of a confirmation for them. And the song was uh, from Earth, Wind, and Fire. And so I'm, you know, they had links to the Earth, Wind, and Fire uh, YouTube videos. I'm looking at the first one, and, you know, I like their music. Yeah, I should say I, I used to like their music. I, you know, I was way, way into, you know, if you want to say secular music of almost all kinds 10 plus years ago. And um, part of the conviction that hit me after I came to Christ was the unbelievable number of albums and things I had that were just flat out, you know, occultic. And the more and more I learned about the Bible and symbology and some of these things are connected um going against the bible you know the satanic stuff and unfortunately you get into that when you study prophecy so you see a lot of it and you know so i'm sitting there looking at this listening to this music and you know it's stuff i used to like and, and uh you know so i'm checking it out and i'm going down these videos here on the side like everybody sees and so the first one that was in the in there while I was watching was here Earth Wind and Fire and this is the greatest hits, and you know again the the important thing was more just a confirmation of some lyrics in an Earth Wind and Fire uh, song that this YouTube channel person was looking at here, but you know so what do I see? <laughs> I see uh, this is you know a symbol for ISIS, right? And I've done tons of these videos. Everybody knows you can track back that ISIS worship to Semiramis in the, in the ancient Babylon right after the uh, Tower of Babel. You see the pyramid, of course. I didn't count, but I, would, I bet there's 13 stairs here, but I didn't count. Um, interesting here, you see the symbol for Judaism sitting under the Eye of Horus. Uh <laughs> Make of it what you want, but to me, uh, that is really bad. Um, you see the light radiating off of uh, this, and you know the um, illumined ones. The, the Lucifer is, you know, illumined one, and so you get all the Luciferian stuff. You get the ox symbol, and that's the resurrecting. And you guys know I did. Uh, well, some of you'll know bunches of videos going back taking a look at Nimrod Nimrod in the Bible Nimrod in secular and occultic belief and uh, how the Assyrian the Antichrist potentially tracks through the Old Testament and one of the things I surmise is because the pagan cultures are expecting Lucifer and probably you can say um, that expectation is connected with the death of Nimrod 
or I think you can say Osiris is the same. Um, he was part man, part God, and when he died, the legend is, you know, he went into the heavens, and, you know, sun god worship spawned from that, but the belief was with this Ankh that, you know, it was a symbol of the resurrecting life, and, you know, here you can see the loop, the resurrecting life uh, for Nimrod, and then you see, you know, Saturn, which, you know, Satan, Saturn, that's where that came from. So you see all this occultic, and then you see it repeated down here. You got the menorah uh, down here under the light rays, and, oh boy, I can't even discern. Of course, you got the cross being stamped by the by the pyramid, and uh, I don't know what this thing is down here, but, you know, I got to believe that's probably some occultic thing as well. I don't know all of these guys, but, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there looking at this thing just going, yeah, please, Lord, come get me. <laughs> Take me out of here. And, uh, you know, so I, I'll just show you. I mean, I, I just literally, I clicked on the next, the next, the next. And so I don't know, Earth, Wind, and Fire, the best of, I guess. And what do you have? You got the Phoenix rising with the sun symbol. And uh, I guess for some of you that are... Uh, savvy to this this is you know also why um the quote eagle <laughs> is on the american money it's really you know was a illuminati inspired a stylized phoenix so people wouldn't pick up on it so readily and so the eagle is a phoenix and the phoenix rising is the destruction that the the new world order rises out of the destruction and here you see again the resurrecting Ankh, um, and you know their expectation was Lucifer returns, that the Phoenix then rises up out of the destruction, and this is you know what's that doing on Earth, Wind, and Fire? And maybe Earth, Wind, and Fire is connected to this, and I'm just being stupid, but um, that's what that's you know what I got on that album cover. And then the next one in the line was this one, and, you know, the pyramid reference and the fact that the album was named Spirit, uh, and they're white, right? The, illuminate, the illuminated ones, the, uh, you know, <laughs> you guys get it, right? And then this one, and here again you see the, you know, it's the Egyptian stuff, but it's Ra, Sun God. Uh, worship, you see here, only one eye is obvious, the eye of Horus thing, right? And, and uh, you might even have the male-female thing going on here, which, you know, you, you get in the uh, Baphomet, but I can't say that for sure. Um, but you get the idea. And, uh, poss you know, what's this trying to tell us <laughs> in terms of, you know, it's got the high-tech thing here and then the ancient here. Well, it could be a, another reference to, you know, the resurrection of the ancient uh, Babylonian religion. So I know this is Egyptian, but the roots of that Egyptian sun god worship came right out of the ancient Babylon. And maybe their expectation was in the rocket jet age here that uh, you're going to get a return of this. Uh, because that, that really, I think, is what... Uh, for instance, the pagan belief system is, is that this, you know, Nimrod or Lucifer, you know, whatever name you want to choose, that he took over time as the dispersion from Babel happened, that uh, the return of him was going to be the, you know, the, for the pagan, all the pagan belief systems, the return and the and the moving into uh, the age of Aquarius, <laughs> right, or the next <laughs> the next age is what the pagan beliefs are, and uh, you know instead they're they're going to embrace uh, the Antichrist, and what we're going to get is destruction. So um, let me click through this one here. I had to confirm this, but I looked it up. You know this is this is your chakras and. Uh, you know, if you guys, I doubt people that watch my channel are into yoga, but if you are, um, the positions in yoga, you know, it's Eastern 
religious. It's not an exercise program. And the, the um, positions in yoga were intentional to open you up for demonic influence. Now, they, <laughs> Eastern religion wouldn't say demonic influence. They would say that the local gods could be released in you. And, you know, the power would come up through the chakras of your body. And the, the ultimate, you know, in, the, in this yoga pagan, you know, especially kundalini, is uh, that the it, when it reaches the top, you've been you know sort of consumed to the most enlightened uh, position by the uh, spirit. And in reality, what the, what this is, I mean, go Google Kundalini, um, you know, like manifestations or whatever. You'll see some way wacky stuff where yo. Kundalini yoga is being used specifically for spiritual encounter, uh, wacky stuff. And people in the U.S. have just been sucked into this. Oh, it's just an exercise program. You know, I've, he I've heard so many people well, on YouTube, you'll get you run into this where people say, oh, yeah. And it got a little weird at the end where they told us to open ourselves up or to, you know, try and try and commune with that spirit that's near you or, you know, weird stuff like that that you know if you're christian and you're participating in that maybe you just weren't aware of it right just you know repent of it drop it don't don't do it it's just one more open gateway for uh bad to come so earth wind and fire again it you know again pagan mysticism you know is one of the early album covers and here probably nobody needs help with this one but you know you get the the light around the all-seeing eye portion of the pyramid might even be some symbolism down in here connected and related right so that's what i got tonight i just thought i would uh share one more reason why i can't i can't wait for uh, this to be gone you know i'm sitting here okay i don't know if you guys can see this because it's going to be really small on a video Another Earth, Wind, and Fire album cover that I, uh, let me see if I can do this live. <laughs> so you get the same thing going on here. This might even be more trouble. I'm not sure if that's Jesus in there or what, but uh, you see the onks again and the phoenix wings and the whole thing, sun the sun god man this is just disturbing isn't it and here's this whole thing is your isis symbolism you know stylized again but that's what that is that is just bothersome isn't it well anyways i wanted to just uh i guess connect with you guys um i think the time is short you know yeah i think i think very likely the rapture is going to happen on a feast day um, but I'm really I go with the uh, you know the Bible if you study the verses out the doctrine of eminence is really the most clear one that you can discern I personally think the last three feasts are fulfilled at the second coming just the way that the first feast in order and with the exact days apart were fulfilled at the first coming i think that pattern has been set and so i don't think we're going to have a rapture as a fulfillment for instance of rosh hashanah and then seven year gap because that's not the way it's written in leviticus and then you know have uh, yom kippur and uh, tabernacles you know seven plus years from now but I do think if you go back through the Bible, you can make a pretty strong argument that most of the changes in the dispensation, well, I think all of the changes in the dispensation, uh, people will argue happened on feast days. Now, I think, I think most of them up until Christ's coming were on Pentecost or Shavuot. But, um, boy, I'm just going scratching my brain on that. But in terms of a rapture, would I be surprised if it hits on Rosh Hashanah? Not at all. Matter of fact, bring it because, hey, we're, what, seven days away, guys, right? Today's the 17th of September. I guess it's two-day feast. But um, 
I will hope to see everybody in a week if that's the case. Um, I just personally, if that happens, and again, the point will be mute because it will be in heaven, but I just don't think that's going to be a fulfillment. I think it'll, it'll be God using, you know, the Moedim, the seasons as, you know, as promised, as appointed times, but I don't think those would be, you know, that would particularly be a fulfillment. I think those feasts will get fulfilled at the second coming, like I said. So, but I am anxious for it. And, uh, you know what, uh, I wanted to give you guys encouragement and after looking at all this earth, wind and fire stuff, if anybody feels like giving me encouragement back in the comments, I could sure use it. Some of this stuff, I won't say I get depressed, but I just sit here thinking, oh, come Lord, you know, Maranatha, let's, let's go. Um, in my daily walk, I still have my eye towards seeing if I can, uh, witness or engage them in a conversation that, you know, leads somehow to the Lord or the Bible or that discussion. So I'm trying to walk the walk daily, everyone. I, you know, I fail every day too, but I sure want to go. So uh, God bless everybody. I love everybody. If you don't, you know, everybody says this, but who knows who hits which video. Um, if you don't know the Lord and maybe there's, you found this because I got into earth, wind and fire and you're a fan or something like that. Um, dig into this a little bit more, message me a little bit more. Christ is coming for his church very, very soon. And, and when I said seven days, you know, I laugh a little bit. There's a very good likelihood that, you know, because of the blood moons, because of the wars brewing in the Middle East, because Israel surrounded by enemies, because the sun, uh, signs of the sun, moon and stars, the blood moons, tetrad, blah, blah, blah. I could go on and on and on. We are in the end of the age. And if you watch this video, just because for instance, I talked about earth, wind and fire album art, and you wondered a little bit more about why are these Christian people going nutty about the end times? It's because Jesus' return appears to be happening with all the signs that it's said in the Bible. And I want to convince you of this. And so if you're squishy on this, if you have not given your heart to the Lord, if you don't even know what that means, message me, click on the the about here and, and send me a private message. You know, I'll talk to you. We'll Skype call, we'll do something. And, uh, you know, I'll try and explain as much of this as I possibly can, because there's no time left. I really, like I say, I would not be surprised in the least if we were gone in a week. Matter of fact, you know, this doctrine of imminence thing says you really need to be, par be prepared minute by minute. And with the Bible talks about when you see these things begin to happen, and those were the signs I rattled off look up for your redemption is drawing near those signs are happening so if if you're really not a christian yet if you don't know what that means to give your heart to the lord but you're worried about some of this stuff message me because the time is now <laughs> you really there isn't time left so god bless everybody i love everybody uh thanks for watching i really really hope to see everybody soon after that first hug with Jesus, I hope to find the rest of you and do a group hug. Okay, uh, we'll see if we'll see you, saints.